my name is Kelly McGillicott and I'm one of the educators here with Bywater Solution and today I have a short tutorial on setting up libraries and branches within the Koha system. Now whether you're new to Koha or you're adding another branch to your library, this will show you how to set up your library within the Koha ILS. Libraries are set up in the Koha administration module. So we're going to go over there. And libraries are here under basic parameters, libraries and groups. Now you can see the libraries that are already in my system and I'm going to go ahead and create a new library. As we create this new library, we would try to put as much information as we could about your branch, um, starting with the library code. Now a library code, like so many other codes in Koha, should not contain any spaces and should be 10 or fewer characters. This code will be used as a unique identif identifier in the database. So you can go ahead and um, I'm going to put mobile. I'm adding a book mobile to our library. And now in the name, this will be displayed on the OPAC wherever the library name displays to the public and should be a name that makes sense to your patrons. So I'm going to say library bookmobile. Now this, there is an opportunity to add this um, new library to a group if you have a group set up and we'll go into that in a little bit more, a little bit more time. Now the address and contacts fields can be used to make notices um, custom for each of your libraries. So adding an address would allow that um, information to be put on your notices. So we'll just go ahead and put this information in. And a phone number. Once again, you'd love for this to display on um, your notices so they can get, your patrons can get in touch with you. Now an email address field is not required, but it should be um, entered if you are sending notices to your patrons. And this email would be beneficial to have multiple um, staff members be able to access this, this email because if you do send notices out, this is the email it's going to come from. And if your patrons would like to reply, um, you'd like multiple people to be able to access this um, account just in case somebody's on vacation. So you can go ahead and enter an email in here. Now this reply to is if you wanted to um, put another email in for reply, if somebody were to receive your notice and you wanted it to be replied to another one, you could go ahead and put that in here. Um, and there's also a system preference reply to default. So I'm gonna do the same. Now return path, Re return path is a little different. This is if you wanted um, any bounce back emails that were to come from your notices, you could send it to another email. Um, so you could go ahead and put a different email that would receive the bounce back messages. Now your URL is very interesting because if you had multiple um, libraries set up in your system, if you added a URL, and a patron went to look for a book and saw that it was at this bookmobile, um, they could go ahead and click the URL and see and go to your actual library's website. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, that over on the OPAC before we go on. So I'm going to come over to the OPAC and you can see here that this item has um, has two locations. There's the East Branch and then there's the main library. The East Branch is a clickable link and that will bring you to another website, possibly the library's website that would have hours and contact information and any important information you'd like your, your staff patrons to see. Um, if you don't add an URL, it would just be, um, it wouldn't be clickable. So it's something to think about if you wanted to add that um, and that's where you would add it in that URL. This OPAC information um, area is anything you wanted to put here and you can actually add this to your notices. So if you wanted to add your hours um, and add those to a specific email notice you sent out, these could be added on there. 
IP address. If you wanted to restrict your staff client to um, just the IP at your library, you could do so here. So if you didn't want your staff to be able to um, log into the staff client from another IP address, you would actually put an IP in here. If this is blank, then the staff client can be accessed um, from anywhere. These notes would be private to the actual um, staff client. This would not be seen to the public. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Library added successfully. So you see that I have that library bookmobile here and all my information. Okay, if I scroll down a little bit more, you can see that I actually have a couple of group um, search, under search domains. And this would be a group of libraries if I wanted to um, create a group of libraries that's easier to, to search in both the staff and in the OPAC, I could do that here. So here I was, the library bookmobile. I'm going to go back and edit my library bookmobile um, information. And I'm going to say that this is now part of the regional library um, consortium. And I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. So now when your patrons are searching and or your staff are searching, they can say, I just want to look at what's in the regional libraries and it will include that bookmobile. And I'll show you how that looks on the um, the OPAC. So I'm going to pop back over to the OPAC. And here up on the search, I'm going to go way over here. I have all libraries. I have my branches listed here under libraries. And then I also have that regional library that I could go ahead and search. All the libraries are within that region. Another way I'll show you if they if your patron goes to the advanced search and scrolls down, you can see that they can search the libraries here or they could search um, a group of libraries at one time. So that's really handy. Okay, and that is how you set up a new library in your Koha system. If you have any questions, please feel free to go to our website or submit a ticket. This tutorial is a production of Bywater Solutions. Thanks for watching.